Um, okay, so my name is Chris Workman, and I am in the MAIS program here at UWT, um, and I'm currently studying how to uh, uh, introduce a comprehensive data policy here in the United States. <clears throat> right. So what is data policy? Um, data policy consists of laws and regulations um, that monitor and control information sharing and uh, collecting processes here in the United States. Um, these policies are normally enacted by the government, but they can also be um, enacted through business practices. Um, if they are enacted here uh, with the government, it can happen at two levels, state or federal, um, and the, the regulatory body that monitors it here in the U.S. is the Federal Trade Commission. Here in the U.S., uh, most of the policies that the FTC refers to when making data decisions um, are mostly economic, um, and they uh, serve to protect a person's finances um, or, to, or to protect their identity. Um, the prominence of this emphasis on uh, economic rules comes from uh, our free market ideology that we hold here, which emphasizes that uh, the market is an amoral agent in which user decisions will dictate um, practices, um, and that if users are not happy with practices, then they can just choose not to use the products. Um, one area that is not economic that we, we try to keep up on is um, protecting children. <clears throat> um, there's some problems with this idea, first of all. The first is that tech technology education varies um, amongst individuals, and as such, users may not be aware of the ways that their information is collected or um, how that information can be used once it has been collected. Um, collecting this information can also have um, harmful outcomes. Um, and users, there's this belief that users can choose not to use technology, but technology is so pervasive that it would be really hard for people just to never use any digital device ever. Right, so why is it important that we establish values that are not economic? Um, data collection is not harmless. Um, information can be used in dangerous ways to target um, minorities, individuals who hold different values, um, as well as to work to maintain dominant systems of power. On top of that, data is not always secure. Um, breaches happen all the time, so there may be people out there who gain access to your information, and you would not be aware of this. Um, these values determine how our policies are formed. And as such, we need to um, move past these economic boundaries in order to create um, policies that involve uh, placing a social emphasis. <clears throat> um, th there are three major uh, government approaches that we can look at um, when analyzing data policy. The first is here in the US, like I said, we have mostly economic, very minimal policies that work to uh, protect companies over the users and emphasize um, the right to be anonymous and the right to say no. In the European Union, they have um, very strict social and economic policy policies that work to protect users and emphasize consenting to collecting processes as well as the right to be forgotten. And then China has the social credit system, which is a strict social policy that emphasizes government values and, um, and policies. <clears throat> so why should we establish these values? Um, or how should we do this? Uh, we have to decide what it is and uh, we want to value and how we want to value that. Um, once, we, once we do that, we have to decide how we're going to implement effective change. Um, this can be done through um, affirmative policies, as well as through various social means, such as user education. Um, and uh, we must appropriately protect these values by writing affirmative policy um, to protect every aspect of information policies and sharing processes in the way that we need them to be um, protected, um, oh shit. 
Um, and we must also understand that it is okay to have both economic and social values as long as we're valuing it correctly. Sorry. Thank you. That, uh